to a flying start. Well, these two pairs in the men's doubles will not have expected at the start of the week to be in this position. Two unseeded pairs in this semi-final. Japanese pairing of Naoki Kawamaya and Shoji Sato up against the Danes, Mads Konrad Peterson and Jonas Rasmussen. Jonas Rasmussen leading the two players onto court. And of course, Rasmussen very famous in his partnership with Lars Porska, current All England champions, current European champions. But with the retirement after the World Championships of Lars Borska. Mads Konrad Peterson stepped into this new partnership. And my goodness, how well he's taken the opportunities that he's had. He's very much a developing player. I've been chatting to him each day, and he told me this morning in the dining room of the hotel, he said, Jill, keep talking to me. Every time I talk to you, keep winning. So. You know, I'm good luck charm for someone. He was absolutely delighted, I have to say, earlier in the week, his first round match. He said it was the first time he'd ever won a match in Asia. Not only has he won a match in Asia, here he is in the semi-final. Absolutely extraordinary. What a great story. The recent invitational event, the Copenhagen Masters, this Danish combination beat their teammates, the current world number ones, Matthias Bowenkast and Mogensen, in a thrilling final. So they've certainly got potential. So Naoki Kawamaya and Shoji Sato up against the Danes, Mads Konrad Peterson and Jonas Rasmussen. Japanese combination, 29 in the world ranking. Having played 15 tournaments over the last 12 months, but as you can see, this is their first tournament of the year. Shoji Sato, 28 years of age, as indeed is his partner. Quarter finalists they were here in Malaysia a year ago. So they've gone at least one better here this year in the semi final. Jonas Rasmussen, all this player on court at the age of 33, 77 in the world rankings, but they've only played four tournaments. And as you can see from their career win-loss record, a very new partnership indeed. But they have been in a semi-final of a Super Series event previously, reached the semi-final of the French Open. Lost out to uh, Matthias Bonecast and Mogensen in three games in that semi final. To Seyang, Rampa, Christelle Tan, service judge. So, obviously, with these two pairs, both unseeded. And with the Danes such a new combination, not surprising that this is the first ever meeting between these two pairs. OK, let's get ready. And we were watching a Japanese pair yesterday in their quarter-final. Victory over Mohamed Zakari Abdul Latif and Hun Tian Hao of Malaysia. Two straight games. In fact, they've won all of their matches in two straight games. Whereas the Danes have had a much tougher path through to this semi-final. Second round match against the number seven seeds, the 2005 world champions, Howard Bark and Tony Gunawan from the United States of America. And then in the quarterfinal yesterday, the Danes had to defeat the number three seeds, Alvin Yulianto Chandra and Hendra Aprida Gunawan of Indonesia, and won through in two straight games. But Ian, we were impressed with this Japanese combination yesterday in their quarterfinal. Yes, they're a very mobile combination. Both of them actually have got uh, good singles experience, although Sato is the more famous singles player. Kawamaya also started in his career as a singles player, so they've got great mobility, good physicality around the court. 
and yesterday they really grew in confidence during that match I felt started off they were both a little bit tentative around the front court but by the end of the game they were both very aggressive all around the court This is a different proposition today. And a nice clash of styles, I think, for this game, Jill. I think the Japanese will want the game front and back. I think they'll want to be on attack or in defence, cutting out that net position, whereas the Danes will be trying Ladies to narrow the court down, get control right. of the front court, Mas, get a concentration on serve and return. Jonas Rasmussen, Denmark. And on my left, Naoki Kawami, Joji Sato, Japan. Joji Sato to serve to Jonas Rasmussen. The ball, play. So the Japanese pair of Kawamaya and Sato getting the semi final underway. Three-year-old Mads Conrad Peterson. <laughs> Luck of the net board from Shoji Sato. See the two Danish players both finishing in the front court position, very intent on getting control of that area of the court right from the first points. Jonas Rasmussen, of course, a former world champion with Lars Borska on that title in Birmingham in 2003. Oh! Vastly experienced. And still playing amazingly good badminton at the age of 33. And again we see on the replay there, both players very, very high on the court, the Danes. Really intent on imposing themselves on the front court. The flick serve, Koji Sato. Very good start by the Danes. Yes, both serving and returning very well so far, and that's been the difference between the two teams so far. Curse of the commentator. First service error of the match, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah, the more 
experienced player. I think if his partner had done that to him, I don't think he'd be very happy. Flat cross court <laughs> drive from below net height. Not the not the greatest shot selection. Partner played the penalty. Makes amends in the next rally, so. Another flick serve from Rasmussen. And another time it gained no advantage. In fact, the opposite. Uh, well, we saw how quick he was yesterday at the net. Sato demonstrating it again there. Yeah, good anticipation and good teamwork as well. His partner getting the smash in the right place for him, allowing him to anticipate the straight drive. Good doubles play. Same combination again. Aramaya from the rear court, hitting into the body of Jonas. Sato ready, here we go. Smash into the body. Sato again lined up for that straight interception. I think we'll see Jonas start to look for some cross-court defence if the Japanese continue with that formation. Credit to the Japanese pair because at 2 7 down. Yes. We've since then managed to turn the momentum around. Six of the last seven points going their way. Oh. Indeed, now into the lead. Yes, and it's been the more experienced of the two Danes who's made the mistakes, really. A couple of loose flick serves. Return, return fault there. It's interesting to me, though, Ian, the, the uh, occasions I have watched this new Danish combination. I very much felt when... Rasmussen was in partnership with Lars Porska. Uh, Porska was so good at the front of the court. His reading of the game, his ability to intercept and control and dictate pace from the net area. And yet I think in this new partnership, I think Rasmussen has got more freedom to come forward and, and play a completely different role. I think Jonas Rasmussen's a really complete player. As a young player... Um, Everybody was really impressed in Europe when he first came on the European scene with how good he was and how quick he was around the front of the court. And obviously adapted his game very well to play with Lars and also became a top mix player as well, reaching the semi-final of the Olympics. So he's a very, very good all-round player, but he's no mean player in the forecourt, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we go to the mid-game interval with the Japanese pair leading by two points, I mean, I have to say that certainly when I watch them in the uh, Paris event, the Super Series event in France, and also in the Copenhagen Masters recently. I thought that the way that Rasmussen was coming forward and really looking to intercept things, it was almost quite reminiscent. Do you remember the World Championship final in 2003 when they took the gold medal? And I'd never seen Rasmussen take so many chances in the net as he did in that final. And I think he's he's feeling that he's got the freedom to do that again now. Yes, but I think one of the big factors with his combination, how it worked out with Lars, was the fact that Lars served so much better than he did. So Lars tended to have been naturally in that net position a lot more than Jonas. And I think that was one of the telling factors of that combination. Yeah, very good point.
Oh. Oh, has to go down as a golden opportunity missed from Kawamaya. Yeah, Kawamaya not as comfortable in the front court as Sato. Yeah, we saw a good example of it. Really got his racket in a good position for that. Oh! Yeah, and I think oh, that previous oh. error just disturbed his concentration because that was an awful return of serve. Yeah, no wonder the Japanese pair just taking their time as much as they possibly can just to recompose the thoughts. That will help restore the confidence. Yes, but he's a different player in the rear court, Jill. He's really happy to be in that rear court position, see how high he gets there. Good agility to get across the court there, around the head. And Sato looks very comfortable in the net position. When they get into that combination, they look very dangerous. Did well on the first one, that's a good interception. And then made the error on the second attempt. A lot of light from young, the younger Danish player is his patience from the rear court there. He doesn't try and force the first attack. He brings it down, makes sure his partner's in good position. Very mature play. by this tactic of flicking Sato. So quick back in court. I think it's just an indication of the tactics that they, they want to keep Sato away from that net position. I think they realise what the stronger combination is of the Japanese player. Very good judgment. Shuffle just long of that back line. placement of the drop shot from Jonas Rasmussen. Yeah, good play from Mats as well, Mads as well there, just using the block, getting in, forcing the Japanese to lift the shuttle, and Jonas using all his experience with the placement of the drop and the change of pace. This... Uh, First ever Super Series semi-final for the Japanese pair. Thank you.
Yeah, good anticipation from Mats Conrad Peterson. a good return of serve. Just enough pace on the return to make it very awkward for Sato. Coming towards his right shoulder. Can't get his body out of the way to give himself the freedom to play the shot. And it in. That was good judgment. Couldn't have been wide by much. Well, he was awfully confident, wasn't he? It was going to go out. Yeah, it was out. Good call. He created his own luck there. Good courage. And play the net shot when your opponent's waiting at the net. Good low serve, but they couldn't capitalize on it, the Japanese combination. And now three game points to the Danes. And they convert at their first opportunity, 21-17. Score confirmed by the umpire and this new Danish combination. Well, pushed hard all the way. But the opening game going to Conrad Peterson and Rasmussen 21-17. Det er ikke, 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 det er 
komme. Og ude i syd, så ligger han over i den anden side. So the umpire asks the players to get ready for the start of this second game. Second Conrad game. Peterson and Jonas Rasmussen of Denmark Please. having taken the first 21-17. Both pairs unseeded, of course. Oh. And, of course, this Danish combination just in its infancy. Only four previous ranking tournaments together. What an achievement it would be if they were to actually win this semi-final and be in a Super Series final. And from the first two points, from the first two points, they've got a real chance as well. Japanese have gone very flat in the first two points and the... Uh, the Danes have certainly been up to that, moving forward, taking charge of the front court Three, and serving very well. Japanese pair are a pair, though, Ian, that I think have improved suddenly. When you think that they only formed their partnership at the beginning of 2009 when Sato had retired from singles after the Olympic Games and took some time out, then formed this doubles partnership. They won four titles in their first year together. The Estonian international, Canadian international, Swedish, Austrian, not even Grand Prix events. So they built themselves up by playing some of the lower grade tournaments. And it seems to have been a, a good career path for them because now, having last year, only a couple of semi-finals, Dutch Grand Prix. Now in Super Series events, they've learned their trade as it were and now they're beginning to do well at this elite level yes they've got a stock of experience on court together early on in the partnership and that's that always helps but uh, also i mean those early tournaments they played together they weren't actually on the national team at that stage they had to prove themselves and it, they were actually paid for by their club team to go and play those events and uh, they've had to work that work their way onto the national squad Good judgment. Turn the rally around the Danes. They were on the defence. That was the one. The block to the net forced the lift and forced the error. Wasn't the best of low serves from Rasmussen, was it? No, it's something we've noticed over the years that he goes through phases with his service. Um, halfway through a match, he'll be serving well, and all of a sudden, one bad serve, and it goes. And he can't sometimes just can't resist the uh, the impulse to flick as well. Purely a psychological thing then when his serve goes, or is it a problem with his technique? No, I think it's purely psychological now. Like the experienced golfer getting the yips on the on the putts. Yeah, it's amazing the number of older players who do have problems with their serves. You know, players that have served well during the early part of their career suddenly start to get very nervous with the service, lose the rhythm on it, and uh, it, it can be a real problem. Coming forward.
Yeah, that was the hesitation, the indecision, taking it so late. Yeah, I think the Danes, when they really work to set up their partner at the front of the court and hit their attacking shots somewhere where the net player can then intercept, that's the real strength of the Danes, isn't it? Yes, there's a lot of flat Japanese defence at the moment, which is setting up the Danish net player. Your point. Yeah, and it's always been a game that Jonas Rasmussen has been really good at. I mean, his flat game's tremendous. And uh, really, I don't think it's the best tactics for the Japanese player at the moment. saw it again with the service the last time he served it wasn't a great short serve so his immediate inclination was to use the flick serve oh, that's a good steep smash from Rasmussen And it's quite a flat lift if we see intercepts that very high on the court. Not the best lift from Sato there. Thank you. Ready. 8-6 play. That's a good return. Little hold and push deep into the forehand corner. Yeah, I think he was going to leave it. it seemed to be some sort of hesitation. Good combination play. Yeah, good doubles. Mads reading the situation well. He's hitting the rear court. We can see him in the rear court. He's moving straight in to fill the space in the forecourt. Good positive play, good positive footwork. Yeah, right idea from Jonas, he's trying to avoid that set play of the Japanese there where Sato looks for straight interception. But just missing with the cross block. You can see Sato lined up straight there, a lot of space in the cross, just couldn't quite make it. And there is that straight play. Kawamaya hitting that straight smash into the body and Sato lining up for the straight interception. First Japanese block in defence, I think, Jim, and how effective it was. Yes, absolutely. Lovely shot from Sato. Yeah, and we can see Mads anticipating the drive defence a long way off the net. There is space there. So, the exact same scoreline as we had at the mid-game interval in the opening game. Here in the second game. Two-point advantage to the Japanese pair. Park Duvall. Well, seemed to be 
saying something about defensive play there, didn't he? Court one, I wonder if he's seconds, court one, the same seconds. thing as you. Sure, he has. He's a wonderful coach. Come on, players. Denmark. Denmark. Now, Lars Uart spending all of the allotted time out talking to his players. In fact, the umpire having to ask the Danish players to return to court. Japanese going flat, and that's not the game against these two Danish players. Danish players thrive on that fast, flat game. Very quick to follow in when they get the opportunity. Well, at the moment, it's very much following the pattern of the opening game. It's just long. Danes don't like the call. Service over. 12, 11. The Danes standing off, expecting the drive. Japanese player used the block, get the lift. And the Danes never really getting into position there. Oof, 242. Yeah, it looks as though that was the coaching from Park Dubon. Seeing a little bit more pace off the shuttle from the Japanese, and it's just winning them one or two quick points here. That is a tremendous Sub return, observe. That's trademark Jonas, he loves that return. Right court, service to the tee, and the little hold and flick to that rear corner. Oh! 13, 14. Serve return in the third shot. Proving how critical it is in doubles. <laughs> oh dear, once again, it's a woeful serve. what it deserved. Goodness me. Well, he's always had great variation on his return of serve, hasn't he? Always keeping opponents guessing. Again, the Japanese using the drive from below the net, and no one's got too much experience for that. Short. And the Danes are back level.
Oof. Fastest of the match so far, I think. Yeah, again, Japanese guilty of driving the shuttle up. Giving the easy interception on the midcourt to the Danish pair. Here we see it, that drive defence really hasn't worked for them. and furious in that rally. Interesting, though, that the Japanese pair concentrating their attack on Mads Conrad Peterson. Oh, my goodness. Fastest one of the match so far. 277, fastest of the day. Understandable that they're all getting a little bit edgy. Yes, you've got to think that Jonas, with all his experience, is probably the guy who can step up here to take this set. Certainly, there was a mistake on return of serve from Conrad and then a mistake on serve from Kaumaya. Let's see what the experienced player can do. Conrad just getting drawn into the flat, fast exchanges. But thinking clearly on that return of serve. Yeah, good return, good margins. Going for the centre of the court, not taking any risks. I'll rack it up after it for if it came back. Oh. But he does look a little bit nervous as the as the big points arrive. Understandable. It's got to be in his mind, the Super Series final. There, rack it down. We can see his racket was very low there. Been so good in that area throughout the whole of this match so far. Japanese pair just two points away from securing this second game, sending the semi final to a decider. Oh my goodness! Uh, between the leg shot from Mud's gone like Peterson. Yeah, but I think Jonas was guilty there of falling into that trap again. Kaumai at the back, body smash. Sato on straight interception. There, can't go straight there. Always under pressure after that. Two game points. Deep breaths. Oh, four players on court. Here's a test of his service. but they got there. A lot of nerves on the court now. 
for three of the four players. It's the first opportunity to go to a Super Series final. First semi-final for three of them. So 20 all extra points into his clear two-point winning margin. And what a good serve from the man who has been struggling with his low serve. Just changed direction, served out wide. And having just saved two game points, now the Danes have a match point. A match point to see them into the final. Rasmussen, sheer delight at the end of the rally, the former world champion, current All England and European champion, just shows what it means that he's through to yet another final now with his young new partner. his racket to a fan their confirmation of the score 21 17 22 20 in 40 minutes of play and the Danes have gone one better than they managed at the French Open first Super Series event of the year and they're through to the final <laughs> 